the people who control this country say, oh, there are no monopolies. Even like Microsoft, they control only 90%. Even Intel, they control only 90%. So they're not monopolies. Yet the classical definition of monopoly is that a company have sufficient power to determine the supply of some good and the pricing of that good. So if you look at the classical definition of monopoly, pretty much every market in this country is monopolized. You want to go out and buy yourself a pair of eyeglasses. So, you know, you go out and you look around and you see there's a store called Lens Crafters. I'll go in there and, you know, look around at those glasses. Or maybe I'll go down to another company called Pearl Vision. Or maybe I want something a little bit cheaper, so I'll go to Target Optical or Sears Optical. So that seems like you've got an, a really competitive system to sell you glasses. What you don't know is that every single one of those companies it's the same company. It's this Italian firm, Luxottica. Lens Crafters, Pearl Vision, Target Optical, Sears Optical, it's all run by one company. It's an illusion of choice. Well, what happened is that in 1981, the Reagan administration changed how we interpret our anti-monopoly laws, and they said that rather than using these laws to protect ourselves from concentration of economic power, we have to use these laws to help us as consumers. So we're going to use these laws to promote efficiency, not liberty. So in the generation since then, they have been promoting efficiency, supposedly, by creating more and more monopolies. Where once we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of department stores, we now have one or two big companies that run all our department stores. Where once we had thousands of discount stores, we've really just got Walmart and Target. Where once we had tens of thousands of hardware stores, we've got Home Depot. One of the worst effects of monopolization is the destruction of jobs. They take a number of companies and they'll merge them into one. And when they do that, they get rid of many of the jobs that had been, existed in these many companies. In this country, most of the new jobs are created by entrepreneurs opening new businesses. But when you have these giant chains that control entire sectors of our economy, it makes it really hard for real entrepreneurs to open new businesses and to create new jobs. You know, 50 years ago when, say, Sam Walton was starting his business, there was a big chain back then. It was called the A&P. It was a big grocery chain. But the government didn't allow that chain to prevent Sam Walton from starting his business. In fact, the government used our anti-monopoly laws, antitrust laws, against a and many times to keep them under control, to keep them small. Relative to the U.S. economy as a whole, Walmart is maybe six times now, it's six times bigger than the a and was back when the government was attacking the a and And there's no action right now against Walmart. There's nothing inevitable about monopolization. It's a political process. It's a set of political decisions that led to this. If we regard ourselves as citizens, as people who produce things, as people who want to have control over our own communities, then this concentration of power is something that we not only should concern ourselves with, we need to break this concentration apart.